Hello and welcome back Supermums. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some amazing ways to really love your home with an expert creative director and interior designer. The idea behind this is if you really love your home, it's so much easier to keep it tidy and you will find it a much happier place to live in. So here we go, we're gonna get into the main content of today's video. We are looking at ways to love your home. So you've got five ways for us. So I'm gonna hand you over to Artie. She's gonna introduce herself, let us know a bit about who she is as a professional and as a mum. Hi everybody, um, my name's Artie and I run Artie Poppet Interior Design Studio. I create contemporary, eclectic and timeless interiors for busy women and I love to create a quirky and lifestyle-led space um, packed with personality. Um, I like to place emphasis on lifestyle and a place for everything, which I think ties in really nicely with your topic of the month. <laughs> um, I like to use this, the art of storytelling to define interior spaces and really create a, a memorable experience. Um, I also have a three-year-old boy who's verging on being a teenager and um, so I really do understand the need for a tidy home um, and a tidy mind. Um, Definitely. <laughs> um, so I'm here today to talk to you about five ways to love your home. Um, and I think you can do that by utilising what you've got and by keeping your, eye, um, keeping your eye on key items that make your house a home. What are some of your favourite key items? Sorry, this is why I'm going to get really nosy. <laughs> what are your, your, your personal favourite, number one key item in the room you're in at the moment? So I've got this really amazing lamp here. And you that probably can't see cool. it, it's, but it's a, yeah, floor, no, no. it's a floor standing angler pose it and um, it's just amazing. I found it in a, um, a vintage market and actually the wiring was um, from a long, long, long time ago. So I had to get it rewired and um, repurposed and working. Um, and now it just sits, sits here and turns on. And I, it's basically turned on every day and I use it as task light. So it's really good. So I'm gonna go on to um, my five ways. Um, so the first one is, for me is you have to understand how you live. It, by that I mean think about your routines, think about what time you know, what time do you wake up, what time do you go to bed, what what do you do in between? You know, do you wake up and go for a shower? Or do you turn the kettle on? So think about how you live because that's going to essentially define what your interior space looks like and how things are laid out. So I think that's quite important. Um, and making sure you have space for everything. It's not easy making sure you have a space for everything, especially with children, because uh, they decide to um, have it, that the rooms have a life of their own with all their toys and with all, all everything that goes with it. And I'm sure you know that. They come with so much stuff. I had a friend joke once, she says, you give birth to a child and then you give birth to a lot of plastic tats. Yes. And it just, <laughs> it grows, it grows. We're, we're gonna veto birthday presents the next part next next five years because i'm just i can't handle any more stuff enough. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean we've got so much and my, my one's three and it doesn't it doesn't get any less <laughs> <laughs> but by making sure that you know where things are going so toys in boxes or um you know shelves or whatever it is it means that you're naturally going to keep the space more tidier because everything already has a space to go into. So it means you're not thinking, oh, I'm going to, someone's coming around and I'm going to shove this over here or put this over there. You've got a box for it, you know, you know you've got a place for it. So it just defines the way you live and, and your space. And you also know, by understanding how you live, you know what you need to make each part of your day work seamlessly and you know what runs into the next one. So, um, you know, it involves the um, designing the space, but it Im also involves understanding what the space needs to have to function. So I think for you, because everyone's different. I'm a big one for practicalities. I, in a former life, uh, ran uh, bed and breakfast down in Cornwall, and I had two okay. different places. But where I lived, 
there weren't purpose-built big buildings. All the buildings were very small, and so yeah. all the rooms ended up very small. And you had to go practicality first, design second. Otherwise, there would be nowhere to put your coffee and nowhere to hang your clothes up and nowhere to do your makeup. But so you'd have a stylish, nice. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'd be like, practicality first, and then we'll make it look nice afterwards, because you feel the practicality in your soul more. It, yes. it seems are running smoother. It's like the front, exactly. you're not gonna love a painting on the wall if you're walking into the side of your bed every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and what you'll find nowadays, though, is that there are a lot of different um, pieces of furniture that, uh, that are out there that actually do both. Uh, it's just a case of looking. You've just got to look harder. So, or hire an amazing interior designer. Of course, that's that's the perfect solution. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one for me is, and especially as a mum, it's very important. Create pockets of sanctuary. That might mean a mini library in your toilet, in your bathroom, because that's the only place that you have peace for three minutes. <laughs> That's how I, that's what I get, well, yeah. I don't get that anymore either. But, um, you know, think about using each space well and thinking outside the box as to what you might actually do in that space. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important as a, as a parent. The third thing is to tell a story. So use what you've got to tell a story. You might have travelled the world collecting things on the way, on, on your way. You might have been in the army or you might have lived in a monastery for half your life. Um, so where you've been, and it, it really defines who you are. And I think it's really important to use that as a basis to your space and allow visitors and you know uh, guests to become curious and actually ask you questions about what, you, what your life might have entailed based on what you've displayed yeah. because it automatically makes you more proud you know it makes you prouder of what you've got on your walls or in your space so I think I'm, I'm really really hot on, on telling a story in your space so number four is invest in a showstopper it might be an ornate chandelier or a piece of art that you've commissioned or even a bespoke piece of furniture it's something that you've poured money into, it creates value in your home, and because you've had a, a hand at creating it, it's also valuable. Um, it's something that, that you then want to show off because it's something that you've put a lot of money or effort into getting. So I think it's quite important to do, to do that. And it's also then a talking piece. Talking piece, yeah. We're, we're big entertainers, so we like to have some sort of I'm I'm I love having fresh flowers. Like if we've got guests coming round, mm. I will charge out of the house to go and get fresh flowers and skip the shower. Like right? that, it's something in my head that means we've got guests, I've got to have flowers. I can't have guests <laughs> without having flowers. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, so nice, especially when they're fresh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's um we're, we're currently in rented and trying to work out exactly where we want to live. Um, because we think once our daughter starts school, yeah. we don't want to move. We want to do junior school in one place. I moved like eight times in one of the, in one year at my junior school, let alone all the other house moves. Oh, okay. So, so we're kind of like, we need to make this decision where we're going to spend this 11 years of our life. Um, which makes it hard because I, I love this idea of investing in that one showstopper piece but we don't know where we're going to live and you don't want to do it for the room you're in at the moment. And then no, move. And the key is to make it personal to you rather yeah. than just the space. Because especially if you're in rented, it's, it's harder to think, well, I'm not going to be here forever. But then you don't, maybe you don't touch the, you know, the, the shell. You invest in something like, you know, antique furniture or um, creating art because that you're going to take off the wall or take off take and take it with you. So it's always nice to have something that you love, basically. So but you've led quite nicely on to my my final of the five, which is using all your senses. So what you can see in your home isn't always enough. You need to think about things like scent. There you go, your flowers. You know, there's some great diffusers out there. There are some nice, really nice 
these scented candles and test them, find the one that suits you, your home and your lifestyle. Um, and you know, yeah, how you want to be perceived because, you know, do you want to, you know, smell of fresh flowers every day or, you know, do you home to smell of, uh, you know, freshly brewed co coffee? It's important to think about what, what that brings to your home. Yeah. I, uh, what was I, White Company recently, yeah. and they had a limited edition garden tomato candle. It was, I don't know if that was the exact word, but it was like, it was like, a, it was tomato. It was tomatoes, it was like tomatoes in a veg patch or, or wow. fresh, freshly picked tomatoes or tomatoes on the vine. I was like, I thought this smells amazing, but I did not want my whole house smelling like it. And our, our, our kitchen and dining room are open plan and the double doors open onto the sitting room are always open. I was like, I don't want to be chilling out on the sofa in the evening smelling tomatoes. <laughs> as amazing as this candle smells, I mm. want it in the garden. <laughs> and I did, it got, I don't know whether my, my partner passed it on to everyone, but it seemed, it became a thing that I love scented candles and mm. everyone suddenly heard about it. So for, I had my birthday, my confirmation, mm. and then my, and then Christmas in a in sort of spread out that I got candle after candle. Oh, no. Very lovely. It's lovely to receive gifts. I didn't like a single one of how they smell. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Scent is a really personal thing, and you know I uh, am partial to certain fragrances, and the other ones I literally I can't I can't deal with. But it's because it's so personal to you that you have to you have to make that conscious decision as to what you want your house to smell like, um, because you know tomatoes everywhere <laughs> imagine tomatoes in the toilet wouldn't we wouldn't quite work so no. and i mean i i nearly bought into it i picked it up and put it on the counter but luckily the lady had, was getting the other item from the storeroom for me and i came to my senses about this tomato <laughs> candle um, it's very, and i also find um maybe i was looking at the wrong cheap candles but i do find the more expensive candles smell more expensive <laughs> like i feel like that it makes the house feel it's a classier scent it, they're yeah. often less like eye-wateringly toxic yeah yeah um diffusers are good for that because although the smells start off strong it just kind of settles down to a good level and and it lasts for a lot longer than candles so and do you think you can scent different areas of your house with a different smell with a diffuser or would you recommend going right the whole house is going to be this scent for a while and then we'll try a new scent at a later date? I think at first you need to experiment just to find something that you feel suits you and everyone in the house um, but then afterwards I think you kind of need one one scent throughout because otherwise you've got them all playing against each other and then you don't know what that's going to create. So, <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little cocktail of um, diffuser scents. Mm. So it might be <laughs> better to just do one. <laughs> do you think if people are, um, are doing sort of mood boards and stuff for rooms, then they should be including what scents are going to link with that, with their sort of feel for their house and things? You do, but I'm... Um, not so specifically but you because you think about the mood for that room automatically when you're creating your mood boards you're you're putting a, a style to it anyway so naturally um there are going to be certain diffuser smells that um scents sorry scents that um lend themselves better to that mood so you might you don't need to commit to something but it's always something that when you've finalised the direction your, your room is going in, then yeah, of course, it, it would be um, a good idea to then go down the same route with scent. Thank you so much for like fitting us in. I know you're incredibly busy. Um, how do you like to be stalked on social media? Um, <laughs> I feel like that's the easiest way of putting it. So that's been my go-to <laughs> phrase. How do you like to be stalked on social media? If people have got any more questions, or they're like, I can't do this myself and I need to bring in the expert. How can they get in the best place? <laughs> okay, so um, I have a uh, Facebook community called Curated Interiors for the Busy Working Woman. 
Um, and it would be lovely to see some of you on there. It would be lovely to have yourself on there too. Um, it's, it's fairly new right now, but I'm kicking it off with lots of information from myself. I've got 13 years, over 13 years experience in the industry. So um, I'm trying to add more value to um, people's interiors because I know that it's always, not always easy to, to bring on an interior designer. Um, I am trying, to, I am going to be bringing on a challenge very soon as well, which I'm sure will be great for people that are just starting out and trying to perfect their interiors. Um, I'm also running a workshop on the 15th of September. So for anyone who is interested in kickstarting um, their interior design process off, um, it's all about creating the perfect decorative scheme for your interior design your interior spaces um, so as a special offer for you guys I'm going to offer you 10% um, off price which is normally £45 um, it's amazing it's, thank you that's okay just you, if you use the code SMS10 um, and um, that will give you 10% off that will be all those details will be in my group um, so if you join the group um, the link will be in there. Um, I'll link everything down below this video as well. All the, all the links to you and the links to the offer, I'll make sure that's all in the descriptions. So wherever you found this video, make sure you check out the description and everything will be there. Perfect. And yeah, I mean, I, I love answering questions from people. So feel free, free to ask me any questions you have. That's brilliant. I, it's part, part of the dream is to eventually do some of these, some of these videos live and things, but it's tricky because everyone's busy mums and trying to tie up with when I can do it and when whoever's coming on like yourself can do it and when most mums are free to watch mm. gets logistically quite tricky exactly <laughs> um, and we've got at the moment we're about 50 50 split between the UK and the USA so then okay. I've got to take in the time difference <laughs> <laughs> Which also gets tricky. I'm um, among the, I think we're about 25 countries, different countries wow. watching at the moment, but the majority, the bulk is then split between the UK and the USA. So it, okay. at the moment, you've got to send your questions in afterwards. <laughs> I'll be happy to answer them if Jess passes them on to me. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I will get my get my butt in that group. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I really hope you'd enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I'd love to hear if you implemented any of the things, so pop those down in the comments below. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.